Hey everyone, welcome back. This is Mind for the Win, and this is part two of my walkthrough. Today, we're gonna to be working on Photoshop. Right now, I am using Photoshop CC. However, you can also use CS5 and 6 to get the same results. I'm going to grab the files that we exported from Flash. By doing this, go to File, Scripts, and Load Files into Stack. Window will come up, click Browse, Find the folder that you saved them all. These are all the frames we have. I personally like to change the view to list so I can see all of them and select them quicker. Go ahead and select them. Click OK. And you'll see that they all show up here in order, which is fantastic. Go ahead and press OK for this as well. Photoshop will now load all the pictures as layers in the same file. I'll speed this up while we wait. It can take a little bit of time depending how many pictures you have. Once it's finished loading, go to your timeline located in the bottom, or if you don't have it selected, just go to window up top and you'll see timeline right in here. The new photoshops have create video and create frame timelines. For this walkthrough, we're gonna do frame timelines. To make all the layers into frames, we're just gonna to go to the drop down menu on the right side, select it, then you're gonna to go to make frames from layers. Very simple, click on that. The layers are turned into frames backwards, so we're gonna go back to the drop down menu on the right side and we're going to reverse frames. Simple, easy, sexy. The final setup that we have to do is at the bottom where you see it says zero seconds. We're going to want to change that. Uh, in this case, I had flash at 12 frames per second, so I'm going to make it 0.08. That's how long each frame is going to stay on the screen. I'm going to change once to forever so it loops. I'm not sure how easy it is for you guys to see this without a background, so I'm going to put a white background behind all the other layers so it's simpler to see. I'm just going to name it background. The last couple of frames here are the rough draft that I did before in red, so I'm gonna go ahead and start backwards and putting these together with the other ones. Now it's time to actually animate. I'm gonna make a couple of layers over all the other layers and I'm gonna name it Shockwave. I'm gonna speed this up a bit. Just look at my clock on the right bottom side to see how long this actually takes. Now that I'm finished with the shockwave, I'm going to import an actual background. It's not gonna be the background that I'm gonna use. I am gonna take the colors from the background though so I can make better looking dirt and rocks.
All right, now my favorite part, it's time to make fire. Once you're done, you're gonna wanna make a glowing effect. You'll right click on the layer box. Window comes up and just go to outer glow. Press OK. Uh, in order to get this effect right here, you go to fire, or uh, I'm sorry, you go to the uh, the frame, right click, you layer, and you right click, and then you go to uh, copy layer style. This is going to copy whatever you did in there. If you need to go into it, just uh, uh, double click the box, and then here you go. You have everything that you need. Right here we have outer outer glow. Um, one thing you can do to kind of do all this at once is go to the first uh, frame here. Go uh, click on the first frame that you want highlighted all the way to the last one. I believe it was this one. And then you right click, paste, and they all get it. And it should, yep, does it for all of them. See, saves a little bit more time as well. So what I'm doing here is streaks. Just like I did on the first one here with these white parts. Same thing.
of add to it. I'm going to give him a shadow. All right, guys, now that we're done with everything, so now we go to File, Export, Render Video. Um, make sure that you are, you go to the subfolder that you want it to be in so you don't lose it. That's where I want it to be. I'm going to make a subfolder because there's probably going to be more than one element for this particular scene. So I'm going to just name this one Lock Smack. I like to keep it at QuickTime, animation high quality is fine, document size, I like to keep it at the HD uh, TV 1080, which is 920 by 1080, that's fine with me. Uh, right here, alpha channel, make sure that it is straight unmatted. That'll make it so when you import it into After Effects, you don't have a background. If you were to leave it as none, then it would come out with, I, I can't remember if it's a white background or black background, but you obviously don't want that. So straight unmatted. Uh, everything's good. Render. And actually something that I want to do is I would like to just have the flames and stuff in the foreground for something that I want to do later. So what I'm going to do is delete everything. Again, make sure you have all this saved because you're going to have to undo all this. This is kind of the quickest method for me. So as you can see, I just have the, the fire and everything. That's fine. It's going to go along with the other one. So render again, this time, see it's going to be in the same folder, uh, Locksmack, but I'm going to name this, this one Fire Effect, and render. Okay, awesome. And of course, undo all that, everything's the way I want it to be, I'll just go ahead and save it. Alright guys, now I'm off to After Effects to finalize all the scenes. I'm going to be putting the background together, putting a couple more effects, and just generally making it complete. I'll see you folks there. If you enjoyed my video, please like and subscribe, and also consider donating at patreon.com forward slash smite for the win. Thanks so much.